Hi, I'm Dick Howe. It's September 11th, 2011, the 10th anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11th. In the aftermath of that day, I put aside many newspapers that were uh, delivered that, uh, during the weeks after the attack. And uh, in recognition of the anniversary, I pulled some of them out and I thought I might share the headlines and the photographs that were on the front page stories as a reminder of what it was like in the weeks following that day. On September 12th, Wednesday, the next day, the Boston Globe headline said, A New Day of Infamy. And the photograph that illustrated the page was of the rubble where the World Trade Center once stood. The New York Times of that day said, U.S. attacked, hijacked jets, destroyed Twin Towers, and hit Pentagon in Day of Terror. And the photograph on the front page was of the fireball that erupted from one of the towers when the plane struck it. The Boston Herald of September 12th had a simple headline, War, with a subhead that said, U.S. vows punishment after terrorist attacks kill, injure thousands. And the main picture on that front page was the, uh, the fireball erupting from the Twin Towers as well. On Thursday, September 13th, the New York Times said, Stun rescuers comb attack sites, but thousands are presumed dead. FBI tracking hijackers' movements. <clears throat> and there's a photograph of uh, rescue workers clearing away some of the rubble at Ground Zero. On Thursday, September 13th, in the Globe, it said, 12 suspects eyed in hijackings. Grim search for bodies goes on. And there's a photo of the search for, uh, for bodies and uh, survivors, even at that point, at the, uh, the World Trade Center site. But there's also a photograph of Mohammed Atta, who was the kind of the ringleader of the terrorists. And uh, so two days, within two days of the attack, uh, they had already identified him as the prime mover. On Friday, September 14th, New York Times, Bush and top aides proclaim policy of ending states that back terror and arrest shuns New York airports, uh, and arrest shuts New York airports. <clears throat> and the big thing uh, I'd like to point out on that is in the photograph, it shows a light post uh, near the World Trade Center, and people started uh, making mimeographed or photocopied flyers searching for their loved ones and when they first started to go up they were uh, true uh, efforts to, to find uh, missing people but as it became clear that there weren't any survivors they became uh, memorials and so there were thousands of them all over New York City. On Saturday September 15th New York Times Bush leads prayer visits aid crews Senate 98 to nothing backs use of armed forces and there's a photo of uh, then New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani uh, showing uh, President Bush around at uh, World Trade Center which became known as Ground Zero Sunday September 16th New York Times, Bush tells the military to get ready. Broader spy power is gaining support. And there's a photograph of uh, some firemen carrying a casket of uh, one of their colleagues who died. And that was a scene that was repeated hundreds of times for the firemen who were lost and uh, thousands of times for the people who died. New, uh, Boston Globe, September 16th simply says, Bush, we're at war. There's a picture of Bush with Colin Powell. And then uh, below that, there's a photograph of some state police with rifles guarding Logan Airport. Um, Friday, September 28th, more than two weeks later, the Boston Globe, Bush urges a return to the skies. So for uh, from September 11th to September 28th, uh, there was not a lot of uh, commercial flights going on. But more importantly that day, uh, there's photographs of all of the hijackers that were released by the, uh, by the FBI. Friday, October 3rd, there was uh, black and white photos from the security cameras at airport check-ins 
of some of the terrorists who made it through uh, at Logan Airport. The New York Times, uh, October 5th, the Friday, uh, right afterwards, the Times began this special section called the Nation Challenge, which they published every day. And there's another picture of a, um, a bagpipe group from the New York City Police or Fire Department getting ready for another funeral. <clears throat> October 13th, a new, uh, a new threat. Anthrax fears spread across U.S. NBC News employee test positive. Times newsroom evacuated. And you can see that uh, this illustrated uh, news board said tests positive for anthrax. October 23rd, a Tuesday. Um, you have two headlines. One said, two workers die and two are ill at Capitol's Postal Center. Inhaled anthrax indicated. But on the other side, you have a Northern Alliance soldier in Afghanistan running as American bombs fell near rebel positions. And the headline says, U.S. bombs uh, frontline Taliban. So there's the um, picture showing that we are already uh, engaging the Taliban in Afghanistan, and there's the headline about the anthrax. Now, I said the Nation Challenge section that the New York Times published every day. Um, one of the most important parts of that was um, they called it Portraits of Grief. And what they did was they did a small story about every single person who died in, uh, on September 11th. It wasn't an obituary in that it didn't talk about um, their relatives or um, where they were born and where they went to school. Each one of them was uh, just a story about that person. And it was a tremendous effort by the New York Times and it lasted for more than a year and until they got every single person who died that day documented. And in February of 2002, uh, during the February school vacation, uh, our family traveled to New York City uh, to visit Ground Zero. It was very crude then. There was a plywood wall around it. You um, had tickets at a per certain time. You would go up to a small platform uh, that you would look in, and it was just really a big, um, a big crater at that time. And there still was all the uh, orange spray paint on the buildings in the vicinity and uh, and the glass that was broken. Um, but it's hard. While we were there, we picked up this uh, souvenir book called The World Trade Center. And on the back, there's a photograph of the Twin Towers as they stood before the attack. And uh, it's uh, just a reminder that uh, 10 years ago today, uh, in the morning, those towers were standing intact, filled with people. And that by uh, by 10 o'clock in the morning, they had both come crashing to the ground and were turned into piles of rubble with thousands dead. Uh, and at the Pentagon, there were, um, I think, 160 or 180 that died. And the passengers aboard the four airplanes that crashed, two into the World Trade Center towers, one at the Pentagon, and the fourth that was um, under control of the hijackers and heading back to Washington to crash into some target, uh, but that was the one that the passengers took control and, uh, and the plane crashed into an open field in Pennsylvania. And so that's uh, my commemoration of 9-11 uh, by showing these photographs. I hope everyone takes some time and thinks about the, that day and uh, remembers where you are, what you were doing, what you thought, and how your life may have changed since then.